Thank you for spending part of the afternoon with us. It's a privilege to be here. And today I'm talking about biological corrections. The concept of biological corrections actually gives us hope that we can improve without resorting to expensive drugs or procedures or tests. Um, the philosophy behind biological corrections is that we want to make our body so healthy that it cannot harbor disease. How does that sound to you? That sounds excellent, doesn't it? Because there's so much uh, morbidity and mortality out there. This actually, this concept behind biological corrections actually assumes that we can take our body, just like when our computer crashes and we reset it back to a healthy uh, place, we can do the same thing with our bodies. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. The criteria for a biological correction, there's not that many criteria. The first one is they're relatively simple. And they're so simple that you might not even consider it to be that big of a deal. The other thing is biological corrections tend to use a natural approach. So we're not using drugs, we're not using anything unnatural. It's also done with consistency. And so consistency means that it may take several days of practicing a biological correction, but there's actually people who, with one treatment, and I'm gonna give you some examples of that, after just a 30-minute 30, 30 uh, treatment, they have completely, their back pain is gone. Um, and this is a permanent type solution. So these are very simple criteria. Maybe there's other ones out there. Um, now this is not really a criterion, but I have also observed that biological corrections are not always easily observable or explained. And this causes most people to be somewhat skeptical, if not downright cynical about it. And so we'll be talking about that as well. So here are some examples of biological corrections. The first one is our thyroid function. How many of you have ever had problems with your thyroid gland? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. That is, as you get older, it's more and more common to have problems. And I've worked with thyroid conditions now for 20 years at least. And even walking down the street, I can walk by someone and see a goiter. Believe it or not, in this country, we shouldn't have goiters, but it's still somewhat common. So thyroid function, now I'm not a physician, so I have to make biological corrections without using drugs because I can't prescribe them. So for thyroid function, I would prescribe the precursors to thyroid hormone, which would be tyrosine as the amino acid, iodine, the tyrosine becomes iodinated, and the other, uh, it's actually an antioxidant, selenium is really important for making thyroid. And so just by getting the right amount of these nutrients in place, we can actually correct thyroid function without having to go on a medication for the rest of your life. So that would be an example of a biological correction. It was fairly simple, used natural approaches, and it corrected. Another biological correction that I spent years studying for my doctoral dissertation was the mechanism of ketosis in resetting the seizure threshold in refractory seizures. And some kids have up to 120, 150 seizures a day. Can you imagine that? That would just be the worst thing in the world. And they eventually, obviously, become disabled. And there's a movie out there by Jim Abrahams, Abramson, whose son had epilepsy. And his son was on, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 medications. They didn't work. His son had surgery, the surgery failed. And then he read a book, this kind of little known book by a doctor at Johns Hopkins called um, Dr. Freeman, I believe. And this book was about the ketogenic diet. Well, he immediately made an appointment for his son to see this doctor at Johns Hopkins. And there was also a dietitian named Melissant Kelly who worked with Dr. Freeman. And within several days of taking their son to Johns Hopkins and going on the most extreme diet in the world, which is a ketogenic diet, a classic ketogenic diet, their son's seizures almost completely stopped. In a few more days, the seizures stopped altogether. Now that sends a chill down my spine, I don't know about you, but 
someone who the medical profession had had for years and years, and he just continued to get worse and worse and worse. And all of a sudden, we put him on a diet, and two days later, he hardly has any more seizures. That is a biological correction. That's what I studied. And come to find out, the ketone, on a, you, you produce ketones when you're on a ketogenic diet. The ketone beta-hydroxybutyrate appears to be an anti-synchrony molecule. And synchrony in the brain is kind of the equivalent of a seizure. And so if you can prevent your brain from going into near synchronous activity, you can usually keep the seizure threshold pretty high and not have to deal with seizures. So that's another example of a biological correction. Spinal alignment. How many of you have been to the chiropractor because you could barely walk? No one? A few of you? <laughs> They've saved me twice. And so just one visit to the chiropractor and my spine gets aligned and I feel better and can walk. And that's another good example of spinal alignment. I'm sorry, biological correction. Uh, another good example is sleep. And what happens when you don't get enough sleep? Cranky. Cranky. We get cranky, we can get psychotic, you can develop symptoms of schizophrenia, you can gain weight, you can have irregular heartbeats, You're, we're more likely to get diabetes, we're more likely to have a heart attack, a stroke, all of these things from not getting enough sleep. So we go to the doctor, so what do we do when we can't sleep? Well, we drink coffee for one thing, and because we didn't sleep very well, we get up the next morning, now we need coffee. And so we go to bed that night, we can't sleep. We go to the doctor, I can't sleep. So he gives us a prescription maybe for Xanax or something like that. Now let me ask you, do you think we have a deficiency of Xanax? I don't think so. We have a deficiency of sleep. And how are we treating that? Are we trying to get more sleep or are we making it worse? Many times we make it worse. And a, one of my favorite physicians, uh, Dr. Iacono, he used to tell his patients, if you really want to get well, move to the mountains, go to sleep when the sun goes down, get up with the sun, and live in tune with nature. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. So sleep is really important, and just getting enough sleep and learning how to sleep to successfully sleep can be a major biological reset. Sunlight, sunlight is really important. Getting enough sun actually can shut off more than 80 different cancer genes. And they might get shut off for two hours, but some of the genes might get shut off for two weeks. And that's incredible protection. There's no drug that I know of that can do that kind of uh, work. So sunlight is really important. Time in nature. Now, leave it to the Japanese and the South Koreans to come up with the term forest bathing. So time in nature, or you might go to, on a hike in the forest, is really an incredible reset. What happens as soon as you step into the forest, almost right away your blood pressure drops by quite a bit. And as you're walking through the forest, you're breathing in all the volatile oils that are coming off the pine trees and all the other trees. You're seeing beauty, you're, see, you're getting some sunlight, and you're also getting some electrons from the ground, which is what we're going to be talking about here in a minute. So time in nature is really critical. Cleanliness is really important. Our skin is the largest detox organ in our body. And so we live in a toxic world. We consume toxins, we breathe them. They're just in our water, they're everywhere. And one way we excrete these toxins from our body is through our skin. And so it's really important to keep our skin clean so we're not reabsorbing the toxins as they, they get excreted. And a really good way to enhance uh, your skin's function is to take a sauna, to go to get a nice far infrared sauna if you have access to one. Uh, another really awesome biological correction is eating greens. And I eat a lot of spinach, uh, kale, Swiss chard, sorrel. These are all excellent. That's right, Popeye. Uh, these greens have a vitamin called folate. And when you get synthetic folate, it's not called folate anymore. It's called folic acid. And folic acid is not quite absorbed the same as regular folate. 
So in this case, I actually recommend that you avoid the full folic acid supplement and get your folate from the food that you eat. And it really is very powerful. The next biological reset is elimination effectiveness. For every meal we eat, we need to have a bowel movement. And so if you eat two meals a day, you need to have two bowel movements a day. If you eat three meals a day, you need to have three bowel movements. I want to tell you a quick story about a patient I had about 10 years ago. I was working with a local physician in, in their office, and she said, you know, I don't know what to do with this patient. She's dying. Her hemoglobin, every time I see her, it continues to drop, and the next time I see her, it can't drop any lower than it is right now. So I said, well, I, what can I do? So I walked in, and I said to her, I said, well, what did you have for breakfast? She said, toast, and I said, anything on your toast? Well, some margarine. I said, anything else? Well, I had half a cup of clay. I said, okay, so what'd you have for lunch? And she told me what she had for lunch. And I said, is that all? She said, and I had half a cup of clay. And I said, well, what'd you have for dinner? Same story. She told me what she had for dinner. And I had, and I said, is that all? She said, no, I had half a cup of clay. And I said to her, well, when was the last time you had a bowel movement? And she said, it's been at least 30 days. And I thought, okay. So I went back out, and by the way, this disorder is called pica, and it's somewhat common in the South, and it's possibly related to a mineral deficiency. So we were able to help this lady, and were able to reverse this decline in her, hemo in her hemoglobin that could have been potentially fatal. So a, a good bowel movement is really important. Then posture, and this is one area where I do not do well. So, you know, p pushing your shoulders back, sticking your chest out. Posture is really important because it makes sure that nervous signals are, are freely flowing. But the very last one here that I want to mention is earthing. And this is where we're going to spend the rest of our time. And it's so exciting. I just can't believe it. And I hope you guys uh, enjoy it as much as I do. Now, I can't go any further without making this comment. Sometimes our psychological issues compound our problems. And what's mental, oftentimes, in fact, almost every time, what's mental becomes physical. It becomes manifest in our body. And you can't say, well, I'm not having symptoms today. I'm stressed out, but I'll be okay. It actually does catch up with us. And so it's really important to pay attention to the mental um, issues as well. Okay, so what is earthing? We can call it earthing or grounding. It's formally known as... I'm going to play outside, I'm going to work outside, I'm going to do some gardening, I'm, I'm going to do something outside. We don't do that anymore. We spend most of our time inside on our computers, on our smartphones, and kids today never spend time outside. It's really just incredible. Who knew that touching the earth had such power? And it really is, you're going to see some really interesting studies. Earthing works for almost everyone to some degree. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you examples of that, but it does work. Some may experience a rapid correction, while for others it might take a little bit longer, but it does work. Just remember that we didn't get to this uh, place overnight. Okay, what is earthing? I'm a conductive surface, you're a conductive surface. Let's shake hands. So when I shake your hand... We just exchanged some electrons. There was some flow going back and forth. Uh, the, the flow of electrons is actually called electricity. If it's high enough, you can turn on a light. All living things are conductive, and the earth is conductive. And so when we make contact with the earth, our bodies actually become topped off with electrons. And you're thinking, well, what's the big deal? And we're gonna, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about electrons, but before we do that, how does the Earth get its electrons? And this is really exciting. We live in Texas, so we kind of like to get rain, right? Um, it's always great when rain is in the forecast. And when we get thunderstorms here, they're usually pretty exciting, I have to say. But at any given time on planet Earth, there's about 2,000 thunderstorms going on. And at any given second, we have 20 to 100 lightning strikes that actually make contact with the Earth. And a typical lightning bolt may transfer. Do we have any math majors? 
no math peers. They're studying. Okay, <laughs> so it may transfer 10 to the 20th electrons. I don't even know what number that is. It's a lot of electrons. And that's the equivalent of 10 to 200 volts per strike. That's a lot of electrons. So what is an electron? Electron, at the subatomic level, an electron is the body's most basic nutrient. It, they have a negative charge, and the flow of electrons is actually, actually electricity. And these models right here are not drawn to size. So if you were to compare, this would be planet Earth. This is an electron here. This is the nucleus of an atom, and that would be the sun. So there's a big difference between the electrons and the atoms. So high, high energy electrons are actually very beneficial. Um, besides lightning, we get energy from the sun, and sun actually turns plants. Plants make proteins, carbohydrates, and fat during a process called photosynthesis. And plants, if you think about it, were designed to deliver nutrients. And guess what? We were designed to eat the nutrients, to eat the plants. So it's a really nice uh, synergistic uh, situation. Free electrons are nature's antioxidants, and all plants deliver electrons. Vitamin C actually delivers two high-energy electrons. So the balance of these free electrons is very critical. Healthy people have a balance of oxidative and reductive events at any given time, but when oxidative events begin to outnumber reductive events, inflammation actually sets in. And if we have inflammation for long enough, it becomes entrenched. When inflammation occurs, the chances of getting cancer, heart disease, neurodegenerative diseases goes way up. And what I want to say here is that these electrons actually stop the free radicals. The free radicals are the, the thieves, and they're stealing things, and they're damaging things. And electrons actually stop that from happening. And illness, if you look at illness, it's characterized by having a lot of free radicals and not enough electrons. And what I want to do is talk about some studies. Um, oh, I do want to say this. Contact with the earth is like eating some really delicious, uh, really delicious food, but there's no calories in it. So what do you think of that? So we can go out and get wonderful antioxidants just from walking on the ground barefoot. Okay, we're going to be a little bit over, but let's talk about some studies. And some of these studies, uh, they're, they need to be repeated in more numbers, but this is interesting. So what you're looking at here is there's a patch, a conductive patch on the bottom of his foot. It's attached to a wire. The wire goes into the ground plug on an um, outlet, or it goes outside into a metal stake that goes into the ground, and that would be gr um, grounding. Now, you can do this naturally by just walking on the ground, the earth, and you get uh, lots of electrons transferring that way. Let's look at this study right here, the biological effects of grounding during sleep. And what happened, the, uh, the cortisol levels actually came down during nighttime, and they actually assumed a more uh, natural uh, cycle. Cortisol uh, became, had a more natural uh, cycle, circadian cycle. Females seem to have more improvements than males. Uh, the subjective findings, participants said they had less pain. This is a really interesting study, and this is really where I wanted to get us. We're going to skip the rest of the studies. But this is actually a case study. There's a couple case studies here. And what they're, this is a thermogram. It's using infrared camera. And they're actually looking for circulation. And what you see here you see, this is basically a thermal amputation. This lady has almost no circulation in her hand right here, okay? And over here, you see another, and this is before earthing. She spent four nights getting electrons while she was sleeping, and this is how her hands look after just four nights of grounding herself. Isn't that incredible? This is another slide of hers, and these are her feet. And again, we're looking at circulation. This is a thermal amputation that was restored after just four nights of earthing. There's one more, um, okay, so the, her results were, she had a decrease in pain, 
Her sleep got better, she, her legs weren't achy, and she didn't have restless leg syndrome, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go to the next one. This is a 46-year-old male with lower back pain. And you see where the arrow is right here? This is where he was really having problems. I believe he had had this problem for 10 years. He, um, he did 30 minutes of earthing, just 30 minutes of earthing, and his pain was almost completely gone. Isn't that incredible? Again, these are just case studies. They're not major studies. Um, I'm going to just show you. We're going to skip some of these studies right here. This was a really interesting one done by, um, I think, a, a nice group of researchers here. They looked at facial blood flow. Now, ladies, we want our face to look good, right? Well, earthing may be the key to that because when you look again at these thermograms, this is 11 minutes of earthing and this is 45 minutes. So you see circulation coming back to the face. It's really amazing and all you're doing is getting, um, you're just getting these free electrons. So let me just, um, oh, let me go back here. So common ways that we get electrons besides uh, just walking on the ground, uncooked food, sunshine, moving water. Moving water is actually better than a lake. Um, outdoor exercise, touching someone else. So if you're a medical person and you're always touching people, you might be transferring your electrons to them. So you need to make sure that you're topping off your electrons so you're not suffering. And then common ways electrons are depleted. Foods that cannot donate electrons, you see here, fat, animal foods, soda, alcohol, processed foods, cooked foods. Um, if you're in a high-rise building, you're not getting electrons. If you work in a high-rise building, you're not getting them. And there's not getting enough sunlight. In summary, a wise man once said, the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserveth the life of him that hath it. So take this knowledge and do something with it. I really hope that you go out and you go barefoot and you go hug a tree. I mean, these are just awesome things to do. So anyway, thank you for your time, and I really uh, hope you learned something uh, useful.